Today here on rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive. Hey, look, it's another crossover. I think we've done that open a few times, right? Uh, this time we are behind the wheel of the 2018 Audi Q5. This is a uh, new model, completely redone. And it is a luxury crossover vehicle. We've had the opportunity to do almost 1,500 miles in it in the week we've spent with it. So I think we have a pretty good idea of what this thing is like to live with. And the question is, it's a crossover. So, yeah, it's a crossover, right? But do we like it? That's what we're going to find out on this episode of RumbleStrip.net and 10-Minute Test Drive. So we got this Audi Q5 right before we had to take a trip down to Southern Virginia, Roanoke, to be specific for a family funeral. Unfortunate uh, terms, but uh, when someone's battled cancer for two years, you're ready for them to, to let go and you're actually happy that they're no longer in pain. Um, that was the reason we've put all the miles on here. It was... Uh, 570 miles each way from our home in Metro Detroit down to uh, Roanoke, Virginia. And nine hours, and I have to tell you, right off the bat, if you do a lot of miles, this is a perfect vehicle in which to do them. Driven a lot of vehicles over a lot of miles, few of them, there are a few, but not many, who were as comfortable to drive and let the miles roll as, as this one did. Nine hours in, in the car, and whatever, I'll we'll call it a car, because that's, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, no worries. This thing sucked it up like it was nobody's business. I uh, got out of the car, and even driving in some kind of crappy weather, heading down there through some rain and some other stuff, uh, you know, no stresses at all. This thing sucked up the miles. The other thing it did very well was by being incredibly quiet on the road, this thing cruises at very high speeds very well. There were more than a couple occasions when we were driving through the mountains of West Virginia, especially going downhill, and you're like, okay, we're probably going a little quick. Yeah, how about uh, just shy of triple digits quick? And this thing was, you know, it felt like you're going 75 in most vehicles. That's how good the, uh, the ride and the, the, the silence of the vehicle is. And, by the way, on that trip, there and back, we averaged just shy of 29 miles to the gallon. So, not only was it outstanding to, to drive and was it very comfortable, the fuel economy was amazing. Now, not that you buy this vehicle for the fuel economy, but it's a nice bonus, right? 29 on the highway in our uh, combined driving, we've seen right at the EPA of 25. So, that is well done. The Bang & Olsen stereo in here is good. It's not the best one that we've experienced in an Audi, but it's fine. We've run uh, a series of songs through here. We didn't run our flak files through here. We just didn't have time to do that. But um, but yeah, it's it's fine. You plug in uh, good quality recordings and it, it will reward you with good sound. Now this one with this Bang & Olsen system does have a subwoofer. Now compared to the Audi TT we TTRS we had right before this, the sub's not as, doesn't have as enough much juice to it. Um, I don't know that it, bad yeah it, it, it lacked a little feel but in general the Audi, the the system is fine the Audi MMI system in here is fine 
one little niggle, and I stress this is our, our a very little niggle in here, is that if, say, you want to listen, you, you like keeping your uh, your radio on the presets, whether you're listening to Sirius, AM, FM, whatever, you know, it defaults to going back to from presets to whatever you're listening to, whether it's the radio or Sirius. So you could be going to flip through your presets, and you're like, oh, nope, it's individually dialing it. So you have to come down, flick the switch to you know, radio and, and get to exactly where you want. Again, that is the smallest of nits to pick, but it's something that it's taken us a few days to get to like, oh yeah, gotta do that again. Now, the price is reasonable for the class, but few people actually buy this vehicle. When you get to the about $50,000 mark with cars, vehicles in general, the overwhelming trend is that people will lease them. So the price of this one as tested, this is a premier edition, is, let's see, base price 41.5. Yeah, all day. That's a, that's a great, uh, I, I think that's a very fair price for this. Uh, Q5 2.0 turbo Quattro S-Tronic, right? Uh, this has the $9,300 prestige package in it. Should you choose that? Probably because it gives you all the niceties that you'd ever want. Um, it's a whole list of, of things that you would expect. $9,300, yeah, that's some, some bank, but you're, you'd probably be well served by choosing that option. A uh, few other options in here we'll list out. It was driving, I can't read that. I can't read four print uh, font here, four point font. Uh, but the end total here, $57,950. So even at just shy of 58 grand, I think this is still good value for money. More than fair value, I think this is pretty good value for money driving this. There are a few services in here, I'm like, eh, it could be a little bit better, but they're fine. Um, at approaching 60,000, it starts to get questionable. At 40,000, they're fine. At 60,000, yeah, okay. But again, no one's buying this thing. They're gonna be leasing it for probably, what, 599 a month, depending on how much money you put down, maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower. And you'll be very happy with this. Again, it does a ton of miles like it's nobody's business. The back seat has good, not great room. Cargo capacity is excellent. Um, we were able to haul my Mastiff's uh, crate in the back of this thing. I've obviously all folded down, but it, you put the back seats down, slides right in. Uh, we bought a uh, pergola over the weekend, last weekend, and the box is nine feet, nine feet long. So it slid in, it came to uh, literally about here, and it missed. I missed close, being able to close the hatch by about yay much just because of the way it slopes. So again, pretty good capacity in, in that for cargo. Should you buy the Audi Q5 if you're in the market for a luxury midsize crossover? Yes, yes you should. I will give this the uh, rumblestrip.net stamp of hubris that this is, okay, maybe it's not the best, but it is among the best luxury crossovers you can buy. Again, good value for money. You can pile up the miles. Granted, if you're in a lease, be careful. Um, but yeah, good audio system, very comfortable to drive, heated, cooled seats, automatic everything in here. And uh, yeah, don't think you could really ask for too much more at this price point. So if you're in the market, you definitely should have this on your very short list of vehicles to drive uh, as you're shopping. So if you like what you see, like what you hear, give us a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time on rumblestrip.net and 10 Minute Test Drive.